Welcome back. I'm Josh Wyatt with Jones Advisory Group. I am one of the advisors here and I'm excited to share about Medicare in 2024. We're going to go through a quick little slideshow here today and I'm going to point out some really cool things about Medicare. Again, if you're just tuning in, this is a 101 education for Medicare. Uh, there's some major changes going on here and so I wanted to share those up front. The cost of Medicare does change every year. Part D has changed a little bit and we're going to go through those uh, overview today. So quick little quick disclosures here. Here this is an educational workshop. It has a little information there that we can email you this just basically sharing that this is a Medicare educational workshop. Our agenda today is four things. We're going to talk about the basics of original Medicare. We're going to talk about Medicare options and then also Medicare eligibility enrollment and really timing. What are the dates to save? As we look at the foundations of Medicare, we want to also look, think of it as a house, right? So the foundation of Medicare, you're going to look at original Medicare at the bottom here. So there's original Medicare, you have part A and part B, which we'll go into details in a moment. You have the left side, which is prescription drugs, that's part D for drugs. And at the top here, you have Medicare Advantage Plan, also known as part C, which is Medicare Advantage. There's also a Medicare supplement. We'll go into all those details today. Also here, there's ancillary products, including uh, what they call dental, vision, and hearing. Believe it or not, Medicare doesn't cover those uh, features, uh, but there are options there, and there's also potential other options. So think of it as a retirement boat, right? You're on a boat or a raft. You're just cruising down to the retirement zone, if you will, and we're going to focus on Part A. So Part A covers hospitalization. You're looking at inpatient hospital, skilled nursing, home health care, and way down the road, hospice care. You're also looking at most with A Part A premiums because you've worked over 10 years or 40 quarters. Most people pay zero dollars. And then also there is a deductible, which we'll talk about in a moment. As we kind of look at that deductible, um, think of it as just <laughs> things that we have to cover uh, if you're on original Medicare. And so right here you have your Part A deductible of $16.32 per period. So if you check in the hospital, that's a deductible. But there's more. If you're in the hospital for the first uh, 60 days, Medicare covers 100%. But 61 through 90, there's a copay of $408. If you're there longer, it could be $816 per day. So it does have a, a variety of different copays, and then also skilled nursing. If you're a skilled nursing, the first 20 days or 19 days Medicare covers, from 20 to 100, there's additional copays of 204 per day. Now, we're going to transition to Part B, which covers your doctors. Think of it as outpatient services, also doctors and specialists. DME stands for durable medical equipment. So if you need, um, you know, crutches or a walker or something, that's covered under DME. Or preventative services, those are also covered under Part B, which is the doctors. Now, again, there's a Part B premium, which for most pay $174.70 per month. However, if you earn more, you could potentially have to potentially pay more for Part B premiums up to $594. So there are options there. If you happen to get a letter from Medicare and it indicates that you have to pay more, give us a call at Jones Advisory Group. There are forms and options out there to kind of um, could, uh, adjust that potential rate and we'll help you walk through that with Social Security Administration Office. Also, there's a deductible per year of $240 under Part B Original Medicare. Now, also, want to indicate there's a additional copay. So if you go to the doctor, they Medicare typically pays 80% of that bill, um, and then the other 20% is your remaining copay. And you can see there that that is uncapped, folks. So there is no cap on that. Um, there could potentially be a larger bill there when you go into the doctor. Also, you have an additional Part B excess charges. Most people aren't familiar with excess charges. It basically says that Medicare will pay X amount and then anything extra they have to cap beyond 15%. So a doctor potentially, if they're charging you $1,000 for a service, 
With Medicare that caps it, they can essentially charge you additional 15% or $150 in this example. Beyond that, they have to write off the rest or you know, adjust based on Medicare. So just generally speaking, there, there is a potential excess charge with Medicare Part B when you go to the doctors. Also, we're going to focus on, as you look at all the different A and B as a summary, A covers the hospitals, and there's co-pays on the left side. And then B, over here on the doctors, there's also co-pays of up to 20% out of pocket and also $240 deductible plus a potential excess charges if the doctor charges that. But don't worry, we got options for you to help with those costs. Now this is a quick grid here. If you look on your screen there, again, I can email you this grid. It basically indicates, hey, if I make more money with Medicare, they're going to also look back two years, look back. This is in 2022, if you look at the right side over here you could potentially charge more. So most people, if you're uh, single filing under $103,000, I should point over there, $103,000 or $206,000 jointly, if you make more than that in 2022, then you potentially would pay more, both, each of you for your Part B premiums. Again, if you fall in this category, give us a call. We can explore options with Social Security Administration to potentially lower that cost or go back to the one, 174. We can talk about that. Now, moving forward, when did this start? So now as we're going to look at Medigap policies or Medicare supplement policy as options, that actually started back in program in 1966. They had different options, about 10 different plans available at that time. And then what does it cover? Well, the Medicare supplement uh, plans are actually held by private insurance companies. And also, they're very... Uh, standardized, so they're exactly the same. It doesn't matter what company it's with, it, when in a moment we'll talk about those plans, they're exactly the same thing, comparing apples to apples with a Medigap or Medicare supplement policy. For simplicity, we're going to really hone in on probably the most popular ones, and so we'll take a little extra time here. As we focus on Plan G, Plan G right there in the middle, if you notice, if you go down the line, and this is on Medicare and you handbook, it will talk about the different coverages with Plan G. You, it basically picks up additional copays. And so as you look at the copays for Part A and Part B that we just discussed, the Plan G will pick up the rest of those particular uh, copays and coinsurance. And then the only thing you pay out of your pocket with Plan G is $240 a year. But remember, there's premiums involved here with the Plan G, but ultimately the coverage is right here this little section here is a Part B premium which is $240 per year and we'll talk more about that so it does cover the deductibles and coinsurance which we'll look at next remember the screen here so as we looked at kind of that leaky raft if you will or that boat the river going down to retirement maybe the river cruise we'll call it so basically you look at all the different copays and it, it, it can be a little bit overwhelming you have additional copays that I have when I go and use my Medicare which really was designed to cover a majority but not all your health care costs in the Medicare world so as we look at that river cruise let's take a look at that and so it's plan G is going to take care of that big one right so when you check in the hospital at 1632 it will actually pay that copay or that deductible excuse me as we look at the other copays when you're in the hospital for more than that additional copay so we're just going to go through and you you guessed it it's going to continue to cover those additional copays my favorite one is it's going to cover that 20% bill. So that extra 20% that is uncapped, again, that could be a potentially large out-of-pocket cost for you. Plan G actually picks up that, that side of it. And on the right side, too, it also covers that excess charges. So, again, doctors could potentially charge you more than Medicare allows, up to 15% maximum. And then Plan G would cover the rest of that remaining amount there. So, as you can see, that's a happy camper right there on the uh, Retirement River Cruise. Here we go. As we look at when to start, so that's really a big thing about timing. And, and actually, we're going to transition to Medicare Advantage plans on this one. So when did this start? So Medicare Advantage plans actually was acted in two, 20, uh, 2003. Um, it was a second option for Medicare beneficiaries. And so what does it cover? Well, it's also known as Part C, as you can see there, Part C. And you have also uh, things that typically have low to, to very low, zero or low cost, I should say, monthly premiums, uh, annual max amount of pocket costs, and coinsurance and copays. We'll talk more about that next. 
So as you compare a Medicare Advantage plan, it's very similar to what you've been used to with group health insurance. Typically when you go to the doctor, doctor visit, there's some type of co-pays. Uh, if you go to a specialist, for example, and, and maybe we'll pause on the left side. So Part C covers A and B. It mirrors exactly the same coverage as you can see on the left side over here. And then you also in, may include prescription drug coverage baked into the Medicare Advantage plan, which is typical. And then you have additional coverages that are outside of Medicare. So typically some offer dental and vision and a variety of other uh, uh, benefits that are outside of the Medicare world. Now we look at the right, you can see examples here. You might have doctor's visits, so there's a copay there. Specialist visits of $25 to $50 as examples. Uh, preventative care usually is zero cost or low cost. And then if you go into the emergency room, there's typically somewhere, and these are just examples of $40 to $120 per, per time. Uh, again, depend, depending on the plan, it can adjust. Well, what if I need a MRI or a CT scan? Well, sometimes those can range from $200 to $400, additional costs or copay out of pocket. It depends on the plan. Again, these are examples. Outpatient surgery, it can be as low as $275 or $400, potentially, depending on the plan. And then also, if you stay in the hospital or potential chemo radiation, 20%. So these are examples of potential co-insurance or co-pays with the Medicare Advantage plan, which are other options out there, too. Now, as we look at option one versus option two, a lot of, of my family say, well, what's the best fit for me? It really depends on your health history and, and also what your, what your goals are with uh, how you want to coverage. I call it pay now versus pay later. So let's say pay now, option one. Uh, in some families, like my, for instance, my father has option one. He likes the, the idea of I pay now and I, uh, I pay a monthly premium. I don't have a large surprise because the maximum I have to pay out of pocket for the year uh, when it comes to Medicare and Plan G out of pocket. Uh, it's $240. He likes that idea. Plus, he can go, there's not a network. So that's a big key for him. Uh, there's no network. So any doctor or uh, any uh, doctor provider that accepts Medicare, Plan G will pick up the rest, which is exciting. Then you also have uh, Guarantee Renewable, uh, which is it continues. You pay. You continue to stay on Plan G as an example. And then also... If you're outside of those special enrollment windows, which we'll talk about a little bit, you have to go through underwriting, which is you have to look at your health history and potentially um, go through underwriting, which is potentially approved or, or not approved. But that's something that typically we're going to talk about timing, so we don't have to worry about that. Now, option two would be an example of my mother's plan. She's more of a person that says, you know what, I don't mind having that lower premium. And in this example, it just shows usually a zero premium per month extra out of her pocket, uh, but, she, uh, but this particular Medicare Advantage plan is potentially limited to your area. So if you're in, for instance, in our neck of the woods in Kansas, it may be limited to Shawnee or Kansas City, Northeast Kansas area. Uh, so typically there's kind of a, a, a network or a based location. Also benefits vary by plan. So plan G's are standardized or Medicare supplements are standardized but when it comes to the Medicare Advantage plan, it's comparing apples and oranges and pears. It's completely different. Next, we're going to talk about, uh, you, you, and plus, you, you go through network. So this is one big thing here that you typically have a network. If it's that company, they have either kind of like a PPO or HMO. It, there's usually some type of network of doctors that's in network versus out of network. Um, and then typically, uh, each year, these Medicare Advantage plans has to go through a, a rigorous um, uh, CMS, which is Center of Medicare, uh, essentially has to get approved to continue and so Medicare Advantage plans are, are pretty fascinating they could change year to year so again I think of left side option one is pay now versus option two over here which is pay later Medicare Advantage plan and each one is different I have some many families like my family as an example my dad's on the left side as an example a Medicare supplement it was a best fit for him and my mother is actually on the Medicare Advantage plan because that was the best fit for her. And, and that's typical and sometimes often, uh, you know, comp or, uh, households can divide and conquer when it comes to their, their Medicare planning. So we can talk more about that. So basically we're looking at prescription drugs. Now prescription drug plans are something that you have um, a card and you go to the pharmacy to get those prescription drugs. Those actually started in 2026 as an additional supplement to... Um, by private insurance companies, and I, and I call it more of 
in, in junction with Plan G. So if you have a Medicare supplement, typically you have a standalone, what they call PDP, which is a prescription drug plan, um, standalone. Now, if you have a Medicare Advantage plan, usually it's included in the plan, so you don't have to get something separate. But we can go more in details. And so what is covered? Well, your prescription drugs are covered under Part D. And this is a little different. This is sold by private insurance companies. And typically there is a, a tier, four different tiers of uh, coverage in this world. So it's a whole different ballgame, but we'll go into that next. So the prescription drug world, think of it as four tiers. You may have heard the term the donut hole. And so we'll talk about the first kind of structure. The first Part D deductible typically is zero to $545 is what covers the very first section. And depending on the type of drugs, if it's a tier one or tier five drug, it may or may not, uh, that deductible may or may not apply depending on the prescri prescription drug plan. Also, from $545 to $5,030, that is basically, that section is you're responsible for certain copay depending on the tier of drug. And then there's something called the coverage gap or donut hole. You may have heard about it or read about it. Basically, when you hit the $5,000 mark up to $8,000, there's a different level of coverage during that donut gap coverage. And again, we can go to Medicare.gov. They have a great Part D Finder tool that's amazing that can help us guide us and direct us when it comes to that donut hole. And then over $8,000 is called the catastrophic coverage phase, which basically vir virtually limits your drugs to $0 at that point if you hit that $8,000 mark. And so that will change next year, but in 2024, that's how that particular prescription drug coverage is covered. Again, think of it as four different tiers. You have the first uh, 545, then you have 5,000, and then 5,000, 8,000. There's different coverages there. And then at the end, at the bottom here, you can see, oh, there you go, the $8,000 coverage is catastrophic phase, which essentially there shouldn't be any more out-of-pocket costs at that point. All right, moving forward. Who is eligible for Medicare, and how do I enroll? Basically, at age 65, most people are eligible for Medicare um, even if you're still working, you have access to Part A and B uh, when you hit 65. But there's also more gaps. Um, you may also qualify if you're, on, if you're on disability. If you're on disability for a certain period of time, you may also qualify for Medicare. Um, and then if you're under 65, typically, again, you, you may potentially qualify if you're on disability for a certain period of time. So now the question is how to enroll. There's really three main ways to enroll in Medicare. Number one, you can go online and enroll in Medicare. Um, if you go to my or if you go to ssa.gov, you could enroll in Medicare. The second option is you can give them a call at their number there. It's 1-800-772-1213. That is the second option you can do. And the third option is if you've turned on Social Security for over 100 days, before you turn 65, then typically it's an automatic enrollment process. Now you can choose to enroll in A and B, but you will get your Medicare card in the mail. It will be automatically enrollment. If you're still working, again, back to timing, you can potentially disenroll or say, no, I want to pause or I'm going to wait. And we can talk about timing when it comes to your situation based on Medicare, if you're still working. So let's talk about initial enrollment period. What is initial enrollment period? Well, typically for most people, it's when you turn 65. And it's a seven month window. So it's three months before. So in this example, you can see here, the example right here, someone's turning 65 in July, and they can enroll as soon as April. April 1st is an example. No, it's not an April Fool's joke. But you can enroll for an effective date to start coverage on July 1st the month you turn 65 in this example. You could also delay, not that you would want to, but you could also delay up to three months afterwards. So I get a lot of these questions. Well, Josh, I'm, I turned 65 and I'm still working. Do I really need to enroll in Medicare? Well, that question depends on your coverage. Oftentimes, we need to look at what kind of coverage do you have uh, with your current company and is it as good as Medicare? Does your company allow you to stay on that plan beyond 65. There may be some rules that we have to focus on. So that is probably the million dollar question I get asked all the time is, hey Josh, I'm 65, I'm still working, do I need to turn on Medicare? 
we really need to have a conversation around that because we want to make sure that we don't miss that opportunity and we also don't want to have a gap in coverage or not have the coverage we thought we had from the brochure or from your HR company without confirming, hey, do I need to turn on Part A, which typically is recommended, or do I need to turn on Part B to have coverage? So again, there's a lot of different things there um, if you're over 65, but for most people, I would say a majority of individuals turn on Medicare at 65 unless they're still working, which we can have that conversation uh, by giving us a call or sit down one-on-one -on -one and we can look at your situation. Now we're going to talk about Medicare enrollment periods. So the supplement enrollment periods typically uh, during open enrollment, which is when you turn 65 or when you first turn on Part B for the first time, when you're eligible, that usually gives you a six-month window. Now let me focus here six-month window when you first turn on Part B and you don't have to go through health history questions or underwriting, that's typically what they call guaranteed issue. That's an important window we do not want to miss because again, as long as you sign up, you got coverage. It's amazing during that window. Next, we're going to focus on the special enrollment period. Now that may differ because let's say you lost coverage as an example. That's a special enrollment period. Um, what if uh, it was weather or pandemic related. There are some potential options there. Uh, five star plans or moving out of the plan area. Let's say you move in one state and you move into another state. That potentially can give you another option to enroll in a different plan. And then each state has specific guarantee issue ch um, changes, if you will. So there's some different type of rules there. And sometimes some people would qualify for a special enrollment period based on their situation. So again, that's where you and I can have a conversation with my knowledge and the carrier's knowledge and especially Social Security, the gatekeeper for this information, they can definitely help guide us and steer us in the right direction. Again, think of that retirement river cruise boat going down the stream. We want to make sure that you're going in the right direction. Okay, so we'll talk about an important window again. This is the annual enrollment period. You'll probably see a lot of commercials in October. October 15th through December 7th is what they call annual election period. That's a window of time where you typically would change or evaluate your Medicare Advantage plan, your prescription drug plan, because those plans do change. They are different. Uh, I would say as you compare, do I stay on original Medicare or do I switch to a Medicare Advantage plan or vice versa? Those are some options that you can consider. Also, um, your prescription drugs, that could change. Uh, and you may want to switch from one per, uh, prescription drug plan to another. Um, so there are some options there as you continue to evaluate. Most people that are on a supplement plan, you may want to stay on that unless premiums shift a little bit. Um, I have people all the time sometimes shift and change, uh, a, like say, Plan G. But most of them, if it's a competitive, they'll stay on Plan G indefinitely if they're happy with what they have. So again, it depends on your situation, depends on how happy you are with your coverage. Well, thank you. And really the next steps here are with Jones Advisory Group. I'd love to talk to you on the phone. I'd love to sit down with you and talk about Medicare planning. That is so crucial when it comes to health and wealth with our firm to help plan. So give us a call at 785-215-6675 or shoot us an email at office at jonesadvisory.net and, and, and definitely talk to one of myself we have Cole and Carly, part of the Medicare team. We're here to serve you. We're here to help with those three things. Number one, timing. Number two, what are my options and costs? And number three, when do I have action items to do? When do I enroll? So I look forward to seeing you. You guys have a wonderful 2024, and we'll talk soon. Cheers.